All right, who says it stopped at $15 an hour? The fight over hiking the minimum wage raging again with freshman Democrat Rashida Tlaib calling for a $20 an hour minimum wage. The Congressional Budget Office saying that a minimum wage of $15 an hour would cost about $1.3 a million Americans their jobs. So we got Lizzie McDonald with us, Democratic strategist Capri Kafaro, GOP strategist Justin Safey. Um, Justin, end with you, begin with you on the impact of this if it were to come to be. Well, I don't understand why the Democrats want to put so many Americans out of work. We have a growing economy. We have record number of people that are being employed. And this proposal would certainly cost thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of jobs in the U.S. And that doesn't make any sense when we have it. We got to keep do everything we can to keep this economic ex expansion growing. Doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't know how many more Capri have gone on board with this and joined the Congresswoman. Mm -hmm. um, they're still pushing for the $15 wage on a national basis, federal level. Sure. Um, and they passed that in Congress. Right. Or they where, where do the you House think that's that going? Bill. The House passed it, right. I, I certainly I don't think it's going to the United States Senate. It's not going to pass. Now, I take a little bit more of a measured approach approach to this, Neil, as you probably are not surprised with. I try to analyze things in a logical manner. And while I think we can all acknowledge that there are, you know, thousands, if not millions of Americans that are trying to support their family on one, two or three minimum wage jobs, I think we also need to acknowledge that there are regional differences when it comes to the standard of living. What, you know, a place like New York may need 15 or $20 an hour uh, minimum wage. Wage, but a place like Ohio may need $10 an hour. Small businesses are also could also be disproportionately impacted. So I would say it needs to be decided regionally as far as minimum wage increases. And I think that small businesses need to be exempt under 50 employees. Now, the big boys like Walmart, that's a whole different story. Those guys need to pay more and give more hours so they're not so their employees are not um, re relying on things like Medicaid on, and the tax dollars because those multinational corporations can afford it. But, Lizzie, didn't we see in even the, the Bernie Sanders campaign itself uh, when, when there was a concern that it was not paying at that $50 level, it has now essentially agreed to do so, but we'll have to cut back people's hour. Now, isn't that part of the problem? Yeah, that is part of the problem. The CBO, Congressional Budget Office, said you raise a federal minimum wage of $15 an hour, uh, up to 3.7 million jobs will be lost. Uh, it, did, it did say it's hard to tell how the uh, U.S. economy and the companies in the U.S. economy would react. We have anecdotal evidence of seeing, you know, companies are laying off workers when that one-size-fits-all, you know, cookie-cutter approach does go into effect. Certainly in Rashida Tlaib's home district in Michigan, you would possibly see job losses. Uh, the Restaurant Association, a lot of uh, work workers there could see their jobs cut. Uh, we saw that, you know, with Amazon. When Amazon raised its minimum wage, what did it do? It started to cut bonuses. It started to cut stock-based pay, and it moved more to robots. So, you know, a lot of these people on the left like to cite the Nordic countries as their socialist models. The Nordic countries do not do not have a minimum wage. We're talking Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. It's a one-size-fits-all approach that's mm -hmm. not working. There's different costs of living in different parts of the country. So the federal approach, top-down approach, might be the wrong way to go for the U.S. economy. Well, mm -hmm. as Capri pointed out, Justin, I mean, the, the House passed this $15 federal minimum wage. It's not going anywhere to the Senate. But uh, they were willing to accept a standard rate for everybody uh, without distinctions with, in being in cheaper parts of the country or kids versus adults, you know, that kind of thing. But leaving that aside, I'm wondering if, um, if Republicans then uh, look like they're fighting this. And again, I should stress that, that the Congresswoman is among a couple just even mentioning this figure. Uh, is it a big issue for them at all? Well, I think Republicans can rightfully say they're protecting jobs. They're protecting the economic growth that's taking place under this president, under this administration. And I think that's a good argument to take the people. The American people understand we want to keep jobs growing. We don't want to kill jobs. We don't want to send jobs offshore overseas. And that's what this $20 an hour minimum wage proposal would do. So I think the Republicans have a strong argument to the American people to say, we're about growing more jobs in the U.S. We want more people working in the U.S. and not going overseas for, che for cheaper labor. All right. Guys, I want to thank you all very, very much.